Next.js 14 came out not too long ago, and it's got people talking since its presentation at NextConf. Let's talk about the updates we have in version 14. In Next.js 13, Turbo Pack, a bundler optimized for JavaScript, and TypeScript has been introduced, written in Rust. It does the job faster than Vite or Next.js versions 11 and 12. Here's an example of a cold start with 5,000 React components. In Next.js 14, it's not yet stable but performs better, making up to 53.3% fast local server startup and 94.7% fast code updates. Next, we have server actions. Previously, if you had to write APIs, you would make a file in API directory where you would write something like this. This will be called from your client side code using an event handler like on submit. This way of API routes was introduced in Next.js 9, but in Next.js 14, there's a simple way to do this without creating API routes through server actions. Rather than creating an API route in the API directory, it can be simplified into one file, where the create function is called on the server. This is entirely a server code. The JSX form is sent to the user in the form of HTML, and clicking on this button means invoking the function on the server side or making an API call. This code snippet from the conference has been in the spotlight, and people have been discussing SQL injection, saying things like, Is Next.js introducing SQL injection? Our apps are not safe anymore. Versal, you son of But if you're also concerned about SQL injection, I recommend you watch this video by Josh where he explains how this is not causing SQL injections. Another update is partial pre-rendering, another method to render your web page. SSG, pre-build static, HTML pages at build time, serving them faster but lacking real-time data. SSR, generates pages on the fly on the server per request, enabling real-time data but potentially slower. PP, a mix, that serves static content instantly and streams dynamic content as it's ready, aiming for SSG's speed and SSR's real-time data. Partial pre-rendering requires no new APIs to learn and is defined by the suspense boundaries. It allows for a web page to initially show a simplified version while it's still loading the full content. For instance, on an e-commerce page, while the detailed shopping cart and product recommendations are being loaded, a simpler version, like skeletons of the cart and product list, is shown to the user. This way, the page feels faster as something is displayed right away, and then gradually the full content replaces the simpler version as it becomes ready. That's it for now. If you like the video, consider subscribing to the channel, and I will see you in the next video.